Frequency TV. Well, after all the talking I did uh, post-election, giving you my overview of the political situation and how it fits into the final days of Millennium Six, some of you may be thinking, Oh, Martin, jeez, it's so obvious you're a Republican. Well, no, I'm not a Republican. Well, Martin, you have to be a conservative then. No, I don't consider myself a conservative either. When people ask me about my political ideology, I just say, I want small government. And that's as simple as it is. Am I happy that Trump won the American election? Yes, I certainly am. But was I prepared for him not to win? Folks, I'm prepared for anything. Because I have Christ. And I belong to the most important, the highest administration there is. And it makes American politics and world politics look like a joke, look like so, so small and so insignificant in comparison. I am a member of the body of Christ, and my head is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he is building an administration of the complement of the air, as described in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, to complete the all in all. Folks, I can't even begin to describe how much bigger this is is than American politics or world politics. This is Martin Sander. Welcome to the show today. If Trump had lost, I would say, ah, geez, that's a bummer. Things are probably going to get a lot worse in this country. But it's okay. And I would live my life because I am protected. I am under the greatest administration that the earth does not recognize. Again, that is the administration of the body of Christ. And they can take anything away from us. They can take our very freedom away. They can take our money away. But the one thing no one can take away from us is Christ and our membership in the body of Christ, which was decided before the disruption of the world, before times Aeonian even. And the administration that we are a part of cannot lose, will not lose, and it sustains itself because Christ is its head through whatever turmoil might occur on this earth or in our lives personally. For those who wanted Trump to win, uh, were happy, yes, but at the same time, there may be things in your life where you're not winning, where you're losing. But again, I draw the same analogy, or I can compare this to being content and being at peace no matter what administration, no matter what earthly administration is in power. And the same thing goes. Anything can happen to you. And crazy things do happen to us. I'm not talking about politically now. I'm just talking about in life in general. And I think of Paul the Apostle, who was in prison, in prison, and that's a nice prison. At the end, he was in Rome and not so nice of a prison. He was under house arrest at first. Probably wasn't too bad, but then later on, not so great. To the point that he had to put his head on a chopping block, according to tradition. And uh, the rude people in charge there in Rome uh, separated his head from his body. It was not very nice. But I I saw a clip from a Paul movie, and it was so great. They showed Paul in Rome putting his head on the chopping block, and as the executioner lifted up uh, the axe, there was this 
look of contentment and a little half smile on the face of Paul. And that is it right there. This is why the disciples came out, uh, Peter and John, after being beaten by the Sanhedrin, they came out just like on cloud nine. And that must have frustrated the daylights out of the religious hierarchy because we, we can't take whatever these people have, we can't take it away from them. And that should be such a sustaining truth to you. Personally, politically, is there anything else? I can't think of anything else besides personally and politically. They can't take anything from you. They tried to take Paul's freedom away in Philippi. They took his freedom away. They, after they beat him with rods, along with his friend Silas, they put him in the inner jail. And after they recover from the shock of being beaten with rods, they started singing hymns. Paul and Silas started singing hymns in prison with their legs in the stocks. This is what I'm talking about. This is the administration we belong to. It is secure. No foreign army can take it away. No legislation can disenfranchise it. I mean, it, it endures. And we have been tapped for the administration of the Aeonian times to complete the universe in Christ. I mean, that is our guaranteed future. And the world couldn't take it away from you if they tried. They don't even know what it is. They wouldn't even know where to begin. They have no access to it. That's the beauty of the thing. I know with the way technology is today, people have access to your bank account. People have access to your private information. And they can ruin your life that way. People can. Rogue actors or even political actors with evil agendas. But these same people, they can't take away what we have because they, they can't enter into it. I mean, they, people can enter into your private information, steal your social security number, steal your credit cards, your debit cards, your bank account, and they, they can steal all that crap. They can steal your identity. Well, that's kind of a misnomer because our identity is in Christ. What the hell kind of identity can they steal? My name on a stupid plastic card? Oh, God, who cares? Oh, you're going to take my plastic card. You know, and look at our, the, the example of our Lord Jesus Christ being stripped of everything, standing before Pilate, saying to Pilate, you would have no power over me if it were not given you from above. And Paul in jail singing hymns with Silas. And then that's right when the earthquake hit. You remember that? There was an earthquake right after that to loose them from their bonds. That's how easy it is for God to deliver his servants from anything he wants. Anything he wants. In fact, anyone who does anything negative to you, they are doing it by the dictate of God. Anyone doing anything negative to you, personally, politically, whatever, they are doing it because God wants it to happen because it is part of your adjustment. It is part of fitting you for the greatest administration in universal history, the administration of the grace of God, the administration of the complement of the eras of the eons to bring the universe in harmony to God and Christ. And I've mentioned before that Donald Trump is the most famous man on the earth and soon to be the most powerful man on the earth. Ooh, ooh, that is so temporary. Again, it is so small compared to what we have in Christ. Our head, the head of our administration is Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he is not in Washington, D.C. No, no. He's not the head of the European Union. He's not part of any parliament. He's at the right hand of God with an indissoluble life. And he is the one going to bat for us. And he is our enlister. Paul writes Timothy and tells Timothy that you, you don't have to be beholden to anyone except your enlister. Paul used a war analogy, a soldier analogy in 2 Timothy. 
And he says, a soldier in a war is not responsible for his own sustenance, but his enlister takes care of everything. Our enlister takes care of everything. With God operating in us to will and to work for the sake of his delight, we do what we can to make money, to pay our rent, to put food on the table for our families. It all comes from God. And as Job said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But he, one thing he's never, ever going to take away, because he can't, even if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to, <laughs> is the members of his body, because they're the members of his body. He does not function properly without his body, and he is waiting for that body to come join him, who is the head of the body, at which time the body of Christ will be complete, and the administration of the complement of the eons will begin. This is big. It's so big. And again, they, they can't take it away from you because they don't even know how to access it. They don't have the key to get in the door. They can't find the inner chambers. They can't find the lock box where your life is hid together with Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3. Your life is hid together with Christ in God. And Christ and God are the only two who have the key. Nobody can touch it. Speaking of politics, I... I want to read you a short excerpt from my book, How to Go Church Without Quitting God. Uh, this is appropriate. It definitely fits the topic here today. By the way, How to Quit Church Without Quitting God was out of print for a while, but it is fully in print, and you can order it today. This is page 70. I remember a church sign I saw a few years back. I am now quoting from my book, How to Quit Church Without Quitting God. I remember a church sign I saw a few years back in the little rural town I used to live in. The sign explained a lot about what Christians think worship is. Veterans Day was approaching, and the sign said, Because they served, we are free to worship. As noble sounding as that is, it is not true. And let me explain from the book. I am free to worship always and everywhere. I appreciate what our veterans have done and still do to keep enemies from our shores. But fighting for my freedom to worship, that's another matter. How could I ask these brave men and women to risk their lives defending a thing that could never be taken from me? I can worship God in jail. I can worship God in a Chinese prison camp. I can worship God in a nation overtaken by militants of every persuasion. I can do this because true worship happens inside of me. God's temple is in my heart, and I carry my heart with me wherever I go. Worship occurs in my spirit, and nothing can stop that. Quoting Paul now from 1 Corinthians 3.16, Don't you realize that you yourselves are the temple of God and that God's Spirit lives in you? This sign proves to me that Christians have reduced worship to gathering in buildings. The sign proves it. Let me read the sign again. Because they served, we are free to worship. Like our worship depends on armies keeping enemies from our shores. Back to the book. The sign proves to me that Christians have reduced worship to gathering and building. Should a godless enemy overtake our country, the enemy will blow up all our churches, and there will be no more buildings to gather in. The Christians will panic because their worship centers around buildings. No buildings, no worship. That's what they think. And that's what the sign suggests. There are many good reasons to fight for this country. The reason on the church sign is a bad one. No one should kill or be killed trying to preserve the one thing I can't lose. And that, ladies and gentlemen, again, is my freedom to worship. 
I often, throughout the day, remember that, as Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 3.16, that the Spirit of God makes its home in me. And the life of Christ within me and the Spirit of God within me is a, it's like a sheen of protection. No political party can take it away. No enemy can take it away. It's so secure that I can walk through my day with confidence. Even if Trump had lost, I wouldn't be falling apart here. I'd have to recalculate things as far as the end time scenario goes. But as I told you right after the election, everything's going exactly as we thought it would. So we are on track, ladies and gentlemen, for this greatest administration that has ever been to begin right now we are heaven's aristocracy in waiting it's kind of delicious isn't it i mean to me it's kind of like we're just possibly minutes away from the beginning of this administration we're tapped to be its administrators with christ so all we got to do down here is put in our time Live at peace. Paul wants you to do that too. Here's a controversial passage of scripture, Romans 13. I've taught on this for decades. Paul says in verse 1 of chapter 13, Let every soul be subject to the superior authorities, for there is no authority except under God. Now those which are have been set under God. And I would have believed that even if Trump's opponent had won. I would have said to you, the day after the election, this is what God wanted. This is God's person to be in office for whatever purpose. No, I promise you I would come on the next day saying that if the opposition had won. Of course I would. Paul goes on in verse 2, so that he was resisting an authority as withstood God's mandate. How many times I've heard people say, well, that's just if the authority is good. If the Superior authorities turn bad. If they become rogue, if they become unelected, then, then we don't have to be subject to them anymore. That is absolutely not true because this whole context does not start in Acts chapter 13 or Romans chapter 13. It starts in chapter 12 at the end of chapter 12, where Paul says in verse 17, to no one render evil for evil, making ideal provision in the sight of all men. In verse 21, which is the last verse of chapter 12, Paul says, Be not conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Let every soul be subject to the superior authorities. You see how I ran right over the chapter heading, chapter 13? Because that screws everything up. Be not conquered by evil. Conquer evil with good. Let every soul be subject to the superior authorities. For this context to make any sense at all, the superior authorities must be evil. So it's, it's not at all that we're to obey the authorities until they turn evil. No, we're to obey evil authorities. That's the whole context here. Be subject, or I'll just quote the scripture verse, be not conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. You return good for the evil authority. Being subject to the superior authorities is Paul's first example of how to conquer evil with good. And again, in this context, the authority has to be evil. So even for those who think that the Trump administration is evil, sorry, you got to be subject to it anyway. Sorry. I lived in Brazil for a year. I started the Revelation series there back in 2014. Sao Paulo, Brazil. It was strange. I'd never been to South America before. I was on a strange new continent. I couldn't understand anybody. Didn't speak any Portuguese whatsoever. And yet, God was still my God. And Christ was still the head of the body. And I was still a member of the body. And it didn't matter if I couldn't understand anybody it didn't matter if I was under a ju different jurisdiction. It didn't matter that the money was weird. 
because though our situations may change day by day, and I hate change, folks. You're looking at somebody who hates change. I love my ruts. Give me a rut any day. Love my ruts. The big change I'm looking for now is to change from mortality to immortality. But I feel, I, I know this, I know this, because I've been in several situations where I somewhat felt like a prisoner. I can make it through anything. Because Christ is my enlister, and he's your enlister, and he puts us where he wants us. And his administration over us is stable. It is unwavering. His love for us is unwavering. His defense of us before the throne of God is unwavering. It's not like he's begging God to be nice to us. Jesus Christ is God's love letter to us. God and Christ are on the same page. And we are, we, uh, we couldn't be in better standing with God through Christ. And we couldn't possibly be in a better position than we are now. And that would be true even if the opposition had won the election. Folks, this is the greatest truth for our day because of the tumult of the world because of the chaos of our lives, we need to know that the greatest affiliation in the universe is the affiliation of the body of Christ. And we are members of that body. And if God and Christ are for you, ladies and gentlemen, nothing, nothing can be against you.